All right, good evening, everyone, calling together the planning board meeting September 1st on this Thursday. We did have to change the date of this meeting. Usually it's the first Tuesday of every month, but due to the holiday and a conflict with the election, we had to move it to today, September 1st, and we did send out proper notification. So we are in compliance to hold this meeting this evening. Um, brief statement that I have to read. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the government order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law to chapter 38, section 20, real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board. Utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access, this application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you wanna ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's webpage. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure account accuracy. Okay. Um, roll call of our board members, Jim Sweeney. Here. Larry Hassan. Here. Freddie Das. Here. We also have Deputy Chief Ed Williams, Rob May, Director of the Planning Department, Evan Sears, works with Rob and our road has road been introduced yet. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Road Germain is here with us. She is a new administrative assistant in the planning department. Welcome Road. Nice to have and you. We should Welcome. say we have four members present and we have quorum. Okay. All right, so we'll get into um, the agenda. We do have several that are have been continued. So if you are here for 1449 Main Street, um, that has been continued. If you're here for 148 North Montello, that has been continued. 1159 Main Street also continued. Did I miss any, Evan? Just those three. Okay, all right, so. Continue to next month. Next month's All meeting. Right. So um, besides some a &Rs, we have a couple lot releases and on the agenda, we have 48 North Pearl Street. We have 340 and 346 Warren Ave. We have zero Westgate, map 33, lot 55. And then um, last we have property 20 Winter Street. Okay. First, we'll start with I don't know, continuance uh, review and acceptance of the minutes. Did everyone have a chance to review? Yes. Yes. Is there a motion? Motion to approve minutes. Second. All in favor? Jim? Yes. Larry? Yes. Farida? Yes. Tony? Yes. Okay. Moving on to the ANRs, um, Evan, can you take that for us, please? Sure, okay, so uh, the first one is 30 River Street and 55 Emmett Street. Uh, these are just two abutting properties. They are going to take a chunk out of one of them and add it to the other. Uh, that's really it. The, the piece that they're moving, uh, I believe they're taking it out of 55 and moving it to 30 River Street and River Street already like has that piece of land fenced in. So this is really just kind of cleaning up something that's been messy. There's nothing really major with it at all. All right, thank you. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Roll call, Jim Sweeney? Yes. Larry Son? Yes. Freddy Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Okay. Uh, lot releases, Evan? Uh, we have uh, one more a and uh, Amelia oh, Estates. That's right. Has, uh, yep, they were just approved at the ZBA for their 17 lots. And they're just coming here. They're just refiguring, like configuring and altering a few of their uh, property lines. Again, nothing major, just some few little revisions here and there. Uh, so again, that's, that's really it. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Second. Roll call, Jim? Yes. Larry? Yes. Arita? Yes. Tony? Yes. Okay. 
Now moving on to lot release to Zevin. All right. This lot release isn't really a lot release. It's actually uh, something that was approved by the planning board back in 2020. Uh, the project straddles the line between Brockton and East Bridgewater. And um, they're coming up on their two-year deadline for the approval to expire. They're, they're being held up by East Bridgewater. It has nothing to do with Brockton at all. Brockton's good for the project to move forward. So again, they're just asking for that extension in case they can't finish it and go forward before the two years up due to East Bridgewater. Okay. Motion to approve extension request. Second. All right, roll call, Jim? Yes. Larry? Yes. Farida? Yes. Tony? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, there are no street acceptances, no proposed zoning changes. Um, first applicant is Douglas A. King for 48 North Pearl Street, Representative Attorney James Burke. Okay, I am, oops, sorry. There he is, sorry. Uh, promoting um, Attorney Burke to panelist. Um, and Jim, is there anybody else on your team or are you it tonight? I believe I am it tonight, uh, Mr. May. You are uh, it, excellent, thank you, sir. Uh, well, I, I believe we also were gonna be visited by uh, 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 Councillor uh, Farwell, but it, from our perspective, if I may proceed, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, uh, I have the pleasure of representing Doug King on the project at 48 North Pearl Street that quite frankly, I thought was an exceptional pro uh, project for the city. And I, I think some members of the planning board may have agreed. Uh, it, was, it was turned down uh, and uh, Mr. King, who is an experienced and very, very good developer, uh, reached out uh, to uh, uh, Councilor Farwell as well as some uh, uh, concerned citizens across uh, of the street to talk about how uh, they could potentially improve the project uh, and get one that would meet the uh, consensus of some. Obviously, you will not get consensus of all in a project like this. So what we have today is uh, our charge is to find uh, specific and material changes in the conditions upon which the uh, unfavorable action was taken. What was the major topic of discussion at the Zoning Board of Appeals and is identified in the decision is uh, uh, our current fire chief uh, was concerned uh, of the lack of access uh, for the ability to fight fires uh, uh, with the, the rear building. Uh, and as a result, uh, Mr. King and his engineer uh, designed a, uh, a, a fire lane uh, on the left side of the building uh, that I believe uh, uh, was uh, presented before the fire chief himself uh, and, and, and thought it met the general requirements of what he was concerned about. Uh, so it addressed that specific condition. Uh, there was also a discussion about whether or not uh, it was uh, slightly too big. That having been considered, uh, Mr. King reduced the density by two units. So now uh, uh, what we have done is we have shrunk the footprint of the building as well. Uh, there are uh, a greater space uh, in terms of the setback rear, setback side, the creation of the fire lane, and uh, as a, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, a benefit of reducing the density, uh, we picking up four spaces. We have four spaces more than are needed uh, under the ordinance. And I would suggest there was one member of the uh, uh, zoning board who specifically talked about the possibility of guest parking. And that was even met. So what we have, I think, is a very, very substantial modification of a very good plan uh, that reduces density uh, creates and benefits uh, in terms of the public safety and the ability to fight fires uh, and shows a developer who's willing to listen and to uh, try to meet the needs uh, of uh, his neighbors. And that is it.
Okay, thank you for that. Um, so I'll just open this up um, with the question. The reason for the denials, from my understanding, is there was lack of showing hardship. So how does this new plan address the lack of hardship? Well, I, 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 I'm not sure that, uh, and I think we've had this discussion before, I'm not sure that's even an issue uh, before the board. The issue of hardship is one uh, that relates to the Zoning Board of Appeals, and that's conclusory after you take into consideration the various factors that are presented to it. So these new changes will be the fundamental basis for which it'll be brought before the Zoning Board of Appeals to address the issue of hardship at that time. But in this forum, I, I don't think that's even relevant, respectfully. Um, uh, um, Madam uh, Chair? Yes. Um, the planning staff and I met with um, attorney, uh, city solicitor Shaves yesterday um, to discuss this very issue. Um, she reminded us that the planning board is not the one that determines whether or not there is a hardship. It is in fact the zoning board. And so we were, we are right on that. However, she said that if the plan was, our application was rejected for lack of hardship, the applicant still needs to show that there has been new information that shows a hardship. So if the applicant is not showing that there is an actual hardship or, or is a condition that could be considered a hardship, then we were to uh, uh, take that into consideration when you're, when you're voting. All right, that's my, my understanding as well. Respectfully, um, I, I find that very confusing, Madam Chairman, because I, I identified and addressed the hardship issue in its entirety before the zoning board, which I'm happy to do with you today. <clears throat> it relates well, to but, the that's, um, but that they denied because they didn't find it, find hardship. That, that, so. That's absolutely an in, inaccurate assessment of what the actual law is. Uh, the, the issue of hardship relates to the specific facts that go before the zoning board for a determination. So uh, taking Mr. May's suggestion to its conclusion, uh, if you've already addressed in its detail the completeness of hardship under 40A, uh, uh, then how would you in fact have to expand upon that when the very premise of the hardship relates to fundamental issues like uh, 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 ledge, uh, the size and shape uh, of the parcel, uh, the issue, uh, you know, relating to the ability to place the property or the, the structure on the, the narrow lot. Uh, un unfortunately, the city solicitor doesn't attend these meetings, but uh, she made it very clear to us yesterday. And I know Evan and Road were both um, present. So you're, sa you're saying that uh, anyone before the board has to prove hardship to you no, before proceeding. No, no, I'm, what I'm saying is that if you are um, applying for a return to ZBA, when, you, uh, when the ZBA has declared that there is no hardship, that the applicant needs to identify issues that the zoning board may then consider as hardships for this application to advance. She said that if, the, if you are denied on the grounds of hardship, your first um, level of appeal is to the Superior Court as opposed to trying to return to ZBA. Oh, that's absolutely nonsense. I, I'm sorry, Rob. Rob, I apologize. This is and what I, we I, got I, yesterday. I, I, I apologize. Understand. Madam Chairman, I apologize. That's I, I, absolute I, nonsense. You are obligated to make your first appeal by the very defined definition and procedure of the statute. You would not take a first appeal to the Superior Court. That's absolutely ludicrous. I, 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 don't, I don't know how else to say it, Rob. This, un, unfortunately, this is how we were... This is how we were instructed 
Well, if you'd it like is, to maybe it is the interpretation, then it, 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 it's up to the board to make their decision, though. Can I can I suggest a alternative then? Can I suggest that we continue this for a month? And I will be happy to meet with the city solicitor, Madam Chairwoman, and to go on and try to get clarification so that we fully understand what the procedure is in Brockton and its planning board rules which don't seem to be published on what's required to go before uh, a board seeking uh, something beyond specific and material changes. So if we can continue this uh, respectfully uh, for a month, I'm more than happy to sit down with the law department and try to make sure maybe I'm wrong and they'll explain it to me. Uh, but uh, that's what I think we need to do if you're willing. Yes, Madam sir. Chair, it's, it's up first, to you. I do not have a problem with that. Okay, good. Either do I. And first, let me say, I, I understand and appreciate your frustration and, and I appreciate you understanding where we're sitting because as Rob explained, it is our understanding as well. Sure. Um, so absolutely feel free to have your meeting. I think that we will um, as well, if the other board members want to join Rob and I, I think um, I'd like a meeting with the solicitor as well. Um, cause this is our understanding and I want to be, make sure it's rock solid as well. And we're being fair to you, attorney Burke. So thank you very um, much. Madam, let's, now, let's, Madam chair, I, I realize this is going to be continued. However, there are two people who would like to speak. And I believe that that is, um, counselor Wynn Farwell and counselor Tom Minicello. Okay. Uh, um, first do other, any board members have questions that they want to address before we open it up? Uh, I guess I would, you know, once we get that clarification from, you know, uh, that conversation, it would be helpful for the board to have that relayed because we have seen similar things come in. And as a first um, appeal to the to the state, uh, I've just seen uh, as a member of uh, this long, I've seen otherwise, too. So clarification would be great. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you. And, and just a, a quick retraction. I'm sorry, but the city solicitor is Megan Bridges, not Megan Shave. My apologies to uh, to both of them on that. Okay. Um, so if you would permit me, Madam Chair. Sure. Uh, um, this is Councillor Councilor Farwell. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board. I agree that I think it would be very wise for you all to have a written opinion from the city solicitor so that it can be studied. I would certainly want to have a copy of it because I suspect it will govern how counselors appear before the planning board and, and uh, make presentations. So uh, I thank you for your willingness to consider continuing this. And I look forward to the added information that will be gleaned uh, during the next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Councilor Minicello, you had your hand up a minute ago. Um, Councillor Minicello, if you would like to um, speak, you can mute your microphone. Yep. Hello. Hello. You're alive. Hi there. How are you? Uh, thank you for um, hearing me tonight. Um, I reviewed the order of the Zoning Board of Appeals as I was there that evening, and you know, the you know, the decision, in my opinion, prioritizes. Uh, through the listing of the reasons and the basis for denying this um, decision, or for the denial, I should say. And, the, you know, the first item is a hardship. There was no hardship um, expressed. I mean, I know that um, Attorney Burke um, made the argument that um, he thought that uh, the better use would be of residential multifamily units. But, you know, Attorney Burke was a very successful and is a very successful attorney who's had a practice in that location for close to 40 years. So to me, uh, there's no hardship there if, if, if the commercial use that it's currently used for, which is a professional building, a law office, can certainly be developed by a developer as skillful as Doug King to um, build a, you know, a, a premises or a building that is in conjunction or in compliance with the current zoning, which is C5. The second reason they listed was C5 commercial use uh, you know, does not include the project that is being presented, um, you know, was just residential, you know, 
basically what is being requested based on hardship was we want to rezone that area for residential. And the one of the reasons and basis was no, you know, you haven't shown the hardship to justify a variance to violate, you know, the current uses under C5. In fact, the city council recently revised the ordinance with regard to C5 zoning, and it still does not include residential. It adds a whole bunch of different uses. And, you know, if, if, if you know, Mr. King through council would like to um, reapply or, or basically provide a different use and compliance, well, that's a whole different situation. But what he's proposing, in my opinion, are superficial reasons and not substantive ones. I mean, I understand Chief Nardelli, I, I would say it was a piling on. Chief Nardelli says, you know, he's a, the fire chief. Of course, his first, his first inclination is not zoning, but uh, fire trucks, fire safety. So he zones right in on, okay, can, fire, can I get a fire truck around this building to put out a fire if there's a problem? And then, you know, he of course chimes in and says, no, I can't. So, you know, of course, you know, that's one reason, but that wasn't the primary reason. That was, that was later on in the list of reasons why this was denied at the zoning ZBA. But I mean, if you're gonna, if you're going to continue this matter, um, that's fine. But, you know, if, if you were gonna go forward tonight, you know, I would argue that the reasons being presented are purely superficial and not of substance at all. I mean, to change the parking lot, that wasn't a big deal. I mean, yeah, that can be changed, but there were, there were several reasons prior to the parking lot and the fire lane that were much more substantive that are not being addressed in any way, shape or form in this, in this uh, amended uh, uh, application to this, to this planning board. Okay. Thank you. Is, does anyone else have their hand raised, Rob? I do not have anyone with their hand raised at the moment. So if anybody um, attendees would like to um, use the raise your hand function at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a hand up like that. Um, if you're calling in, press star nine. And also want to say that since this topic is being continued to the October meeting, God, I had to stop and think what month it was. Um, you will also have another opportunity um, to testify. And I do have Councillor Farwell uh, with his hand up. And so I am going to, um, Councillor, whoops, there you go. You should be able to speak now. Just one last uh, comment. Uh, when we finally flesh out all of the additional information from the city solicitor, I just quickly took a look at the planning board rules and regulations that are posted. I would ask that that opinion be posted so that other individuals, other attorneys, developers, people who might find the information from the city solicitor beneficial, it be open and available to everyone, be fully transparent with how the planning board is going to go forward in the future with respect to certain zoning board decisions and planning board actions on considering a return to the ZBA. So let's let's put it out there once we have it. Um, thank you, Councillor. As a matter of fact, we would probably ask the board to um, amend their rules and regulations, which are required to be um, posted with the city clerk on our webpage and recorded with the uh, recorder of deeds. So thank Excellent. you for that. I thank you again. Thank you. So uh, I have a Ellen Pitts, excuse me, um, Ellen, Miss Pitts, you should be able to speak now. You're on mute, Ellen. Ellen, you can speak if you'd like to now. She, um, Ellen, you're on mute. You have to unmute your speaker. Hmm. Technical difficulties, maybe. Well, um, unfortunately, we are not able to hear Ms. Pitts, um, but if she can hear us, just remember 
We will be meeting again in October on this same property. Um, and I hope you will be able to join us then. Um, just in case you have issues, um, please, uh, you can email your comments um, to planning at cobma.us and we will make sure that we read them into the record uh, just in case we have continued microphone problems. Okay, is there, uh, do we need a motion to continue this? A motion to continue to October meeting. Second. Okay, roll call, Jim? Yes. Larry? Yes. Rita? Sorry about that, yes. yes. Okay, Tony, yes. All right, thank you, Attorney Burke. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Okay. All right, next. Um, we have 340 and 346 Warren Ave. Applicant is John Andrade, and it's Attorney Burke. Thank you very much. If I may, uh, again, uh, for the board, my name is Jim Burke. I'm attorney at law with offices at 48 North Pearl Street in Brockton. I have the pleasure of being asked to represent Mr. Andrade. Uh, I was not representing him before the Zoning Board of Appeals, so this was a new look for me when he came in. And I, I understand that uh, there were... Uh, two major issues uh, that were of great concern uh, at the uh, hearing before the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, and the first one was that uh, the uh, pathway uh, for emergency vehicles uh, was, uh, I won't say inaccessible, uh, but, but not functionally the best. Uh, and as a result, uh, uh, Scott Farrier has created a revised plan in addition, there was concern by some members of the board about uh, the parking uh, authorization that he had from uh, the city for the lot across the street uh, because concerns that it impacts the commercial businesses uh, and, and potentially should not be used for residential parking. So uh, the, the applicant uh, addressed those. Uh, what he's done is he's come in with a major construction change and now he is looking for uh, 16 units uh, in initially in 22, but with the 22 units and the additional uh, structure that's created in the other section of the parking lot, uh, what he's done is he's created palladium parking so that there is parking underneath, which expands the number of parking substantially. Uh, currently there are 62 spaces uh, in the uh, uh, last hearing before the zoning board, they were looking at 50. So how we intend to hopefully attack the issue uh, before the, uh, uh, the zoning board uh, with the parking is this. Uh, there are uh, uh, a configuration, uh, there will be 14 palladium spaces uh, that will be reserved individually for the tenants. There will be another eight additional spaces that will be reserved for the tenants. Uh, the remains of the rear parking, which amounts to 13, will be available for tenants and guests. Uh, and we would suggest there is no exit uh, on the uh, uh, commercial side to the rear of the building. So from a practical perspective, uh, commercial tenants uh, will seek to use that space uh, substantially uh, uh, less because it's more of a burden, more of a walk, more, more problems. On the north side of the structure, there's another parking lot, uh, which creates 12 spaces. And, and the intent is uh, that that will be uh, a mixed use of commercial uh, and residential uh, spillover. Uh, the employees of the commercial will be directed to use the Brockton spaces across the street uh, for commercial use, as well as they will attempt to uh, uh, get the, uh, the, the patrons to consider doing the same. So what I think the concern was with a member of the, the board at the Zoning Board of Appeals was, uh, we're taking residential uh, use and we're putting into too many commercial spaces affecting commercial businesses. We've reversed that flow, I believe, with this change now, so that uh, from a practical perspective, as, as well as a, uh, uh, a plan perspective, uh, the commercial uh, will use up entirely the Brockton spaces 
uh, and will have only an overflow in the remaining spaces on the side. The uh, additional units uh, result in, a, in an, a, a more expensive project, uh, and the more expensive project requires the additional units with the palladium parking. Uh, the uh, configuration, and Scott's going to go through with it right now, uh, we believe is, uh, uh, is, is for the best. He's going to go into the change, especially with the uh, uh, fire lane, because he had direct contact with the uh, the fire chief on that, and Scott, I'll let you go. Attorney Burke, uh, good evening, Madam Chair, board members. Uh, can I ask if I can share the screen, Madam Chair? Uh, yes. I've gone through substantial training in the last few weeks since our last meeting, so I'm <laughs> fairly confident I can get it to work this time. I can't wait. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks. There we go. Please tell me you're seeing it. Getting there. Yes. That okay. Work. I thank my kids for this. So, mm -hmm. all right. So what you're looking at right here is the original plan that was denied by the ZBA. And not to pile on with what attorney Burke said, the, the biggest issue was we had a proposed 12 unit building right here in what I'll call the top right hand corner of our property making it difficult for a, truck, a fire truck to enter from Warren Ave, swing around the building, go around the cars and get up back out to Cottage Street. So I think uh, in particular, the, the, the two fire chiefs on the ZBA were, were really concerned about that. Uh, so as Attorney Burke said, we went back to the drawing board and we came up with this plan here. So now what we've done is we've moved the building from the top right and have kind of tucked it in the back of our existing building at 340. Uh, in doing so, we now have almost a straight shot from Warren Ave straight out to Cottage Street. So a, a more direct route uh, for the fire apparatus. Hopefully that uh, that satisfies the uh, the safety personnel that, that we're hoping to satisfy. So we think that's a, a major improvement. Uh, as Attorney Burke said, we have the podium parking uh, right here off of Cottage Street. For, uh, for 14 spaces. The rest of the, the spaces would be right here on the back of Cottage Street. The parking that Attorney Burke was saying would be uh, kind of open for both commercial and overflow residential uh, at different times on the north side of the building is, is right on this corner here. Uh, and then again, the parking lot across the street <laughs> where we received uh, permission from the parking authority. I'm gonna zoom way out. Uh, again, this is the site. We received permission from the parking authority for 15 spaces across the street in the in the parking authority uh, owned parking lot. So those 15 spaces, Attorney Burke said, would be certainly for the employees of the commercial space, and uh, we'd encourage as many commercial uh, customers as possible to park over there, as well as the overflow from uh, from residential parking. That's a quick recap, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. And although it seems as if the, the parking plan has improved, but I believe we're right back to where we started with where's the hardship, which was the original denial. Jim, you were at that meeting? Uh, yeah, I, was, I believe I was actually one to deny that uh, on the original. Um, based and I believe it was based on parking. It was kind of jamming into what the, um, you know, the city uh, parking. However, I mean, if you want me to continue, I, I, I feel as though this is a significant change. Um, in, in also for future development in that area. So with the adjustment of, of that parking, it seems a little bit, bit more self-sufficient um, and you also have more, you have the overflow on the top of the lot and you also have um, the extra across the street. So I don't know how far you want me to go, Madam Chair. Well, it's, I'm just reading the notes that said that um, ZBA denied due to no hardship. Although they talked about parking, that wasn't the reason for denial. It was I denied. Think on the <laughs> denials, I think on most you're gonna see hardship um from the zba uh, that's probably that's almost standard issue so 
I, unfortunately, I feel like we're back to we need to talk to the city solicitor and get clarification on this. At, at least on this one, Madam Chair, if I may, they, they never mentioned hardship in the decision. What, what they said was uh, that the, the units would derogate from the intent of the zoning bylaws will negatively impact the orderly development of the neighborhood, uh, et cetera, and parking. They never mentioned hardship in the decision. Really? Evan, can you- Not at all. No, I'm sorry, attorney. That is incorrect though. It says no hardship dealing with the locust was found on the decision. And Where? I know we, Where? again, the city solicitor told us that we're, we can only go off of what is actually printed on these decisions. So if the ZBA is putting in no hardship in all decisions, then that's what we have to go off of, regardless of what was discussed at these meetings. Well, it's, it's, it's going to be, sorry, if I can just interject, it's going to be please. on all, it's going to be on all of them. Sorry. Right. Right. But I think that it, it, it creates an impossible that. standard, Madam Chairwoman. That's, that's, I guess when I'm, I, no. I'm picking up where Mr. Sweeney is, it creates an absolutely impossible standard because yes, it, all of them, that's that's commonplace. Right. Uh, hardship is the first thing they say. Yeah, I, I understand. Um, and I think that it would be helpful, Rob, if we could have a representative from or the chair of the ZBA at the meeting with the city solicitor with um, myself and you and other board members that want to attend. Um, I will try to arrange that. Um, just for the public record, the Department of Planning worked um for months with the applicant to make improvements to this plan um the department supports this idea and this new plan however we still have this directive from the city solicitor on hardship that needs to be addressed um it we've gotten you know several um uh, several directions. We need a final memo. We have asked her for a memo that we can make public. And I do believe she said that she will be drafting one and releasing it soon. It's just we had this meeting just recently, so it hasn't been in time for this meeting. That should but, be coming out. We're still left with the issue of the ZBAs um, using hardship, no hardship for all of their findings or denials, and it's and it's in writing, so it's not helping us now, and I apologize, uh, Attorney Burke. Um, Rob, if we could get that meeting maybe by the third week in October. I certainly hope so. Okay. Um, would you, do you want to consider I, continuing this, Attorney Burke? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, if, 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 our, if, hands if, are our hands are tied. I'm sure you understand all right. our position. If, if, I'm very I sorry. understand your position. Uh, and I think that makes the most sense. I do have someone with their hand up. Um, Kroski, Joseph F. Kroski, I'm murdering your name. I apologize for that. You're an attorney, so please don't sue me. But um, you should. Can be you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, I'm the owner of 30 Cottage Street, the brick building, professional building across the street from the back of Warren Avenue. This is the first rendering I've seen of any plan. Nobody's ever approached me. And this neighborhood is becoming problematic as far as security and hygiene and everything else. And I'm really concerned about the traffic. And this is the first I've heard of any kind of a fire lane being directed from Warren Ave over onto Cottage Street. We have a lot of parking problems. We have the blighted building, the abandoned church next door to us has caused a lot of problems. There's been no maintenance. And I and the way I've seen the practice of, of, of uh, maintaining that Warren Ave property doesn't instill in me any confidence that we're gonna get any kind of welfare uh, from the city uh, if, if we don't have some restrictions and I don't just don't see from my 40 years in this building, how that fire lane is going to work and how we're not going to be encumbered by a lot of extra traffic and a lot of serious security problems. And I mean, security problems. Everybody who lives in the city is familiar with 
what's happening at the corner of Belmont Avenue, Warren, uh, Belmont and Warren Avenue, and on Wales Avenue, that's never maintained. Uh, there's all kinds of parking problems on Wales Ave. So that's just going to be an overflow from Warren Avenue onto Wales Avenue, which has never uh, been a securely patrolled by the sea. I just think there has to be a lot more thought. And I, I appreciate that there's been an investment in this property. However, I, I haven't seen any real progress in that investment. I've seen the tie deck placed around the building. I've seen the windows put in, but I also see a lot of storage problems. I see there are three or four pods out back. There are skidoos, there are Jeeps, there are all kinds of things stored out back. As I said before, not to repeat myself, but it's important to say the way the property, the practice of the way the property is maintained now is not instilling any confidence in me that the promises made at this hearing are going to be fulfilled. So I think there's a lot more thought and that should be put into it. And I would like to have a lot more uh, input into this situation because I'm going to be one of the one of the real I'm going to be one of the you know the the, the real uh, parties that would suffer some damages here and as a matter of fact I think there are eight trailers out there at this point right now I saw a lot of shelving and as I said there are there are ski dues there are boats there are all kinds of things and the only reason we haven't had a traffic problem is because there is a chain link fence there now However, it's not maintained. We've got weeds growing from the courthouse all the way down to the auto shop. So I, I just believe that we are entitled to a little bit more input and that the influence that uh, the board has in making these changes should be imparted to us in some way so that we won't be uh, suffering any more than we are at this point from the traffic, the security problems, et cetera. And I'd be happy to answer any questions because I've been in this neighborhood for a long time and I, I know it pretty well. And I can tell you a lot about what's happening here and what's not happening here, which is even more important. So I have a lot more to say, but uh, as I said, this is the first I've seen any rendering or the first I've ever uh, had any kind of communication with the city, the developer, the contract, or anybody else. Okay, thank you. Um, I have one other person with their hand up. Um, Evo, if I'm pronouncing that right, Ivo. Hello, good evening. This is Councilor Tavares. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize your name. Yes, actually, because I do have. I, I've all uh, through me. Sorry. Yes, I use somebody else's computer right now. Uh, yes, I just uh, good evening and thank you so much for having me here. And I've been listening to everyone, and uh, I'm here with the uh, you know the one of the property right now. Uh, as you guys can see it, uh, this is on my work. No, and um, well, I I I've been listening to all the you know conversation back and forth, up and down, even I listen to the concern. I, I think this is such a great opportunity, especially on Ward 2. And uh, just for me to answer, um, I think he missed Joseph. Uh, I know I understand his concern too, because this is a concern I have every day. It doesn't have nothing to do with one person, especially on Ward 2, is disaster all over the place. I've been dealing with the tons of complaints. I think we need to start change with the city first. I take like more than 35 complaints per day. I got all texts on my phone, all the photo on my phone, like the trash debris all over the place, the traffic and accident. I don't know what's so much going on. Like I'm just speaking really on word two. Every, like, you know, I think this project here, if you guys are gonna grant this project, I think this is a great opportunity because like, you know, this city is gonna be improved more and something like, you know, great is gonna get done. The way the property look at right now, because the property is under construction, of course, like, you know, I, I've been there, I see what's going on, you know, it's nothing done, it's nothing improved, he struggle uh, to do a lot of improvement in the city, to build the community and something great right in the center. 
And then I, I, I think we should not just stick with the, so much negative things with our study yet. I think we should look in a positive way because I, I've been there, like, you know, I'm just living right across the street, like, you know, almost 18 here. Like, you know, I know the way building was. I wish I can invite you guys, can take a little tours and see what's going on. The improvement has been tremendous. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, I can even tell you, like, you know, 99%. And then like, you know, again, just not to repeat myself again, he's still under construction, he's still struggle. You know, we're talking about the middle class right here, you know, try to improve, uh, try to progress, try to do something great, uh, try to bring more revenue for the, for the city, to bring more tax for the city. I think we should all embrace and, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, um, all working together and, uh, you know, find a solution, the way, how can we, you know, get this done? You know, again, to go back again, like, you know, believe me, Brockton has only two code enforcement outside. They try their best to the end. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, we need to work like inside, inside the city, in outside the city, you know, just to kind of have a better, you know, I understand his pain because I'm dealing with a lot of call and complaint every day. I wish it's something we can have a more code enforcement to force the code more and to do better for Brock to have a Brock and clean. And, uh, you know, but this is something great. We should take it, you know, all look at it and give opportunity and, uh, you know, just to progress. Thank you, Councilor Travara. If I could just uh, um, inter interject, um, Rob, for a second. So, Councilor Tavares, would would that be your role? Because this isn't within our scope, but would that be within your role to meet with the applicant or the owner, um, John Andrade and, and Attorney Burke, to uh, address these issues, to, to work on that, since you have so many complaints? Yes, actually, yeah, he's right here. He can explain right now to you. But we, no we, we, heard, we, we heard them all, and, and again, no. that's not within our, our scope, and Yep. This most likely will be continued. So um, I just thought I would throw that out there and you all should meet sidebar this these type of issues because this isn't what we're here to, to okay. vote on. And I also um, have, I apologize. I also have Councillor uh, Mendez um, who should be able to speak now mm -hmm. also. Hello, how are you? Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. And uh, I just wanted to express uh, my support for this project. I do understand that this will um, certainly be continued today and I, I, I can see the reason why, but I just wanted to say that I'll be joining, you know, Councilor Tavares and the attorney Burke and the owner and try to get these issues resolved. I see there's a lot of um, significant change in this project. So I, I do see that we're getting somewhere. So we want to work with the owner to make sure that he's able to develop that building and, and get it going and able to actually do something nice for the city. So I just want to put it out there on the record that I'm in support and I'll be working together with the city and the owner to make sure this uh, goes through. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank um, you, Councilor. Thank you. Anyone else, Rob? Uh, no, I do not see anybody at this time, and I think you might want to entertain a motion to continue. Right. Motion, to con motion to continue to October. Okay, second. Second. Okay, roll call. James? Yes. Farida? Yes. Larry? Yes. Tony? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Attorney Crosby, uh, since we've uh, we will get back to you, uh, you'll have a chance to speak at the next meeting. But uh, they've already moved on. And maybe join um, the counselors with that community meeting. Yes. The owner. The next agenda item. So that this is a uh, zero Westgate map 33 lot 55. We have applicant Carm properties and strong point is their representative. I'm uh, moving Eric Diaz to um, panelist and Mr. Patel is being moved to panelist. Eric, is there anybody else on your team? Uh, there may be a Colleen O'Shea in the audience and she's from Hilton who is the tenant of this uh, particular project. 
I, Cian O'Shea. There we go. I am promoting her to panelist. <clears throat> and the floor is yours, sir. Excellent. Um, for the record, Eric Doyle, first of all, good evening, everyone, Madam Chair and members of the board and staff. Um, for the record, Eric Dias, Registered Professional Engineer with Strong Point Engineering Solutions. Uh, with me tonight on this call is Mahavir Patel, representing the applicant, and Colleen O'Shea, representing Hilton. Um, you folks have actually seen this project before. We were before you earlier this year for a uh, petition to return to the ZBA, uh, which you folks granted. Uh, we were successful at the ZBA. We needed two things from them. We needed a special permit to construct the hotel. Um, and we needed a variance um, for a setback to the park, um, the DW Fields Parkway. And we did receive both of those things. Uh, variance obviously conditioned on an agreement that we came to with the Parks Commission to provide some a certain degree of setback, some additional screening within that setback and some fencing along the retaining wall to screen the park and keep debris out of it, things like that. Um, we have since been to the Conservation Commission and they approved the project. We received an order of conditions. Um, the Conservation Commission review included obviously a review of any work within the buffer zones, but because this is a commercial project, they also hired a third party review consultant to review our drainage design. Um, which we went through some changes, and I'll walk through uh, what the what we actually landed on. Um, and it's I, I'm sorry, are you going to um, put up your plan? I am going to right now. Thank you. I was getting to that. That's my big reveal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> da, 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 da. Ta -da. So here is the cover sheet. Um, let me just refresh everybody's memory because it's been a while since we've been here. Uh, this is Zero Westgate Drive. This is on the top of the page, page north and actually uh, magnetic north. This is the Shields MRI building that's out there right now. Um, on our property, our property is this triangular shaped property or oddly shaped property down here. Um, there's an auxiliary parking lot for the Shields MRI building. Now, this is just about never full anytime that we've been out there. Um, and the Shields themselves do have the parking, they meet the parking requirement on this lot for what the zoning bylaws require. So we're not handicapping them in any way by getting rid of this auxiliary parking lot. Um, this auxiliary parking lot has drainage in it that is completely self-contained. It was built after the Shields was built, uh, which is why this drainage I believe is self-contained. It doesn't tie in anywhere. It all infiltrates back into the ground. Uh, we have a wetland body off the property right here. I don't know how I did that, but luckily I can get out of that. Um, and a 100-foot buffer zone that casts here that's within the Conservation Commission's jurisdiction. This land over here to the east and to the south of us is the DW Field Park. So what we're proposing is a hotel. It is a, this plan actually says 79, I believe it's actually a 78-room, four-story proposed hotel and I believe it's gonna be true by Hilton, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we, for the layout, we have um, compliant parking for what the zoning requires. You can see along the property line here, we have a 10 foot vegetative buffer that is part of our agreement with the Parks Commission and part of what our variance with the ZBA is predicated on. So that will be installed and maintained. There are certain language in the ZBA decision to maintain this in perpetuity. Um, there is a small retaining wall located where my cursor is here. The site is on the down, the lower side of the retaining wall. So this actually sticks up and we're proposing a small um, a micro mesh fence on top of it for further screening. Um, Going through, we did um, talk about the Conservation Commission review, and they did ask their third party peer reviewer to look at our drainage design. Fortunately, on this site, we have fantastic soils. We've done test pits just about all over this place, and what we consistently find is sandy soils to a good depth with no groundwater. So what we were able to do is collect all of our stormwater from the site and it all goes into a recharge area that is located on the property 
right in this location here. So the vast majority of stormwater from this site is going right back into the ground, uh, which is obviously a bonus. Um, and that includes rooftop runoff area as well. So complete recharge on this site from a stormwater management perspective. Um, we have provided a full erosion control plan that's also been reviewed by the third party review consultant that reviewed this for the Conservation Commission. Um, we've provided a lighting plan. Um, all of the lighting fixtures are going to be downward facing. They're going to be dark sky compliant LED. Uh, you can see by the tick marks along the sides here that we're not lighting up anything off the property, uh, which is obviously one of the goals of the lighting ordinance in the city. Um, and we provided a landscaping plan. Um, and in that landscaping plan, a lot of it is geared at the buffer zone between us and the DW Field Parkway um, and the screening that's required through there and the ongoing maintenance that goes through that. Um, and the rest of this, I believe, is just general construction details, which I don't need to bore you all with. Um, so that is the, the overall of what we're proposing. Um, it hasn't changed very much from what you saw between the request to return to the ZBA and now, we've been able to maintain a very consistent layout throughout this whole project, I think, which is good. Um, and that's it. Rather than ramble on further, I will turn it over to you, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you. Well, I see that um, the city engineer is now content with all the changes and so is zoning and conservation. Um, opening this up for any questions from the planning board members. Madam Chair, if I may, um, I remember on the uh, stipulations, uh, we kind of pounded into these guys that in uh, you know, other members that we didn't want to see uh, this as a place for, you know, long term living or family living. Did those stipulations translate down? I'm just want to see, you know, the backside of that. Just Eric, if you could answer that, maybe. Yeah, um, I don't, and Mahavir can probably speak to this even better than I can. Um, there is no plan for this to be long term living. And I, I believe that is written directly into your special permit with the ZBA. Okay. Um, so I believe that then makes it enforceable that if you ever did find out that this was turning into long-term living, frankly, the city could pull the special permit and it would be in violation. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure that, uh, you know, that made it on there. And that was really our major concern. Otherwise, um, you know, we loved it. And we loved the fact that the parks uh, department approved the, um, you know, the, the new setback to the park. So. so so just for clarification on that, when you say no long-term living, like you mean um, a permanent permanent address for someone, uh, uh, like a lease right. or something, because sometimes these hotels are used for if someone has a house fire and, and the insurance pays for six months for someone to live in the hotel. That wasn't your concern, was it? Well, it is an example from the other hotels that are in the area. Um, okay. On the other side of Westgate Drive. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. If I remember correctly, and I might be making this up, so please backstop me if I'm wrong, but I think the language was that this couldn't be anybody's address or mailing address or something like that is what Correct. we landed on. Right. Um, so this couldn't, it, this couldn't be anybody's mailing address, so that would stop this from turning into long-term living. I'm sure if there was a situation where a family was displaced because of a house fire, that the city would would certainly not oust them from the hotel, um, but certainly we don't want that to be commonplace or anybody taking advantage of that. Right, okay, uh, thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Oh, good, I am mute, unmuted. Um, Rob May, uh, we've been working very closely with the uh, uh, Strong Point Engineering, mm -hmm. and uh, we are very happy with this plan. Uh, I don't know if you have had a chance to um, go to the Hilton webpage, but their product, True, um, is a um, crisp, modern um, approach to hospitality. Uh, dare I say, hip. Uh, <laughs> as, and, and Pam has stayed in one, so um, she was very happy with, with the product. Uh, and I am thrilled to welcome, although it's a tad premature, I'm thrilled to welcome Hilton to our community. I would agree with you. So. Uh, Madam Chair, one more question. Um, I ask this usually on all site plan approvals. It, say you get approval, when are you looking to build? When would you start building? 
Um, I believe what we've talked about internally is we really wanted to make this meeting so we could start building this year. Okay. Um, so my, my anticipation is that if you folks approve this tonight, we'll wait the appeal period and get a, the bucket in the ground as soon as that lapses. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? So uh, to the back of the building or towards the north side, I don't see any lights. Um, if you go to your uh, photometric plan. You're right. We don't have any photometrics on that. Anything yeah. that's in the back of the building would be wall packs um, that would just light up. There's a pet. Do you see this hatched area right here? That is a patio. Um, and this is just a walkway that, you know, wouldn't be used much at night, but would certainly require some pedestrian lighting. So yeah. we can... Um, we can get some wall packs represented on this building that would face downward and just light up that walkway. And also that uh, that uh, patio kind of uh, patio. Uh, so it's that brick or stone? I believe it's going to be uh, like a paver patio, or like stone okay. pavers or even stamped concrete perhaps. Okay, because all your water is going to towards the south, right? So I was wondering if it is, you know, gonna clog that area or not. So I, I don't believe it'll clog that area. The, the grading plan shows that the water is traveling toward Westgate Drive okay. and that location. Um, so I think that we would be okay there. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Frida. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Ready to open this up to the public? There are members of the public that would like to address the board. Um, please use the raise your hand function at the bottom of the screen. You'll see a icon with uh, somebody's hand up. Um, and if you're on a phone, press star nine. And at this time, I do not see anyone with their hand up. Madam Chair. Okay, is there a motion? Motion, motion to grant. approve with stated conditions and to note um, fellow Parita Das uh, proper lighting on the north side of the building. Second. Okay, roll call. James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Parita? Yes. Tony? Yes. All right. Excellent. Thank well, thank you all for your Welcome time. To the neighborhood. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and let me say, too, just while we're here, uh, as Rob mentioned, we had, did work with the city on this quite a bit, and the city was great. Um, they, they were certainly very helpful and willing to cooperate with us. So big thank you to everybody involved. Good luck. Thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. And ladies. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, uh, we have a preliminary subdivision, 20 Winter Street. The applicant is Pedro Elias and or Elias, sorry if I mispronounced that, Representative J.K. Holmgren. Scott. And Scott has been promoted to panelist and may share his presentation. Make presentation. You asked the Meg. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good evening again. Board members, Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering, representing Pedro Elias, who owns a house at 20 Winter Street. Uh, it's kind of a, an interesting situation. He has a house that is pretty much split right down the middle between two zoning districts. It's uh, R2 is the front of the property on Winter Street, where his existing single family home is. The back of his property is zoned R1C. Uh, his total lot area is a little over 30,000 square feet. As you folks know, the R2 zone requires 7,500 square feet. Uh, so what we have for you tonight, and if I'd like to push my luck and share the screen one more time, Rob. Fingers crossed. There we go. So Mr. Elias has his existing house right here, number 20 Winter Street, kind of a little bit of a hammerhead uh, situation. The zone line runs right through the middle of his property. So again, his existing home, it's a single family home, a smaller home, it's zoned R2, it would remain that way. 
uh, what we're looking for is uh, permission from you folks for uh, preliminary subdivision approval to go ahead with the ZBA. And we'd be looking to divide the property into two lots to create this lot up here, lot B, uh, which would be the, the site of uh, the Elias family, single family home. Uh, Mrs. Elias in particular wants a bigger kitchen and some bigger living space. So uh, they're hoping to build a, a larger home here for their family. It would be zoned R1C. Uh, the minimum lot size is 30,000 square feet. We would be at about 16,000 square feet. So that uh, due to the shape, the topography, those are the reasons that we'd be going to the ZBA. Everybody around us has uh, roughly about a 10,000 square foot lot. Uh, they're all primarily single family homes. The new home would be fronting on and have its access off of Merritt Ave, which is a little bit of a, of a dead end. Merritt Ave does not make it all the way out to Winter Street, but it does uh, proceed past Mr. Elias's property. So uh, what we're looking from you folks is permission to proceed to the ZBA, uh, where we can hopefully make our case to them uh, upon success. Folks. You're drowning out, Scott. Can you hear us? I don't think you can proceed without Scott, correct, Rob? Did he drop out completely? Uh, he's half partially there. Um, Scott, would you log off and log back on? Or maybe stop sharing, that would help. Call your kids to help. I think he has frozen up. Okay, we'll give him a couple minutes. I am going to try to drop him to attendee and bring him back. And that did not help. He's back in attendees now. I uh, see him there. I will promote him to panelist and let's see if that helps again. Scott, you should be back. Maybe. Is there anyone else? Um... Here is the applicant here. Okay, I did the stop share. Scott, if you can hear us, maybe dial in. I think it's his computer that has frozen up. Worst case, we do, could we vote a continuance or? Is this the last case on the agenda? I, I believe it is. Yeah. It is. Yes, it is. Well, an agreement to continue this if he can't get back on.
uh, let's say one more minute and that would be our only option. While we're waiting, um, Rob, do you agree? Um, I agree, let's, but let's give him a quick a minute. Right. Yeah. He it's just funny. sent an email said he's trying to get Buck back on, but I'm not sure if he'll be successful or not. Can you email him back to try dialing in? <clears throat> Please. Sure. Scott, are you there? It looks like he's there. Is he trying to unmute? Because he's on two lines, it looks like. I see two on my screen. Yeah, I see two on my screen also. Can you remove them, Rob? Uh, I will again. remove one of the Scots. I think it would be best to um, continue. Is there a motion? Or, uh, <laughs> Motion to continue. Second. Roll call. Larry? Yes. Jim? Yes. Rita? Yes. Tony? Yes to continue. Okay. Okay. So for the attendees um, who may uh, want to speak about this case, we are continuing it to the October meeting. Um, you will have a chance then to um, uh, make comments on, on the project. So we apologize for the technical difficulties at um, Scott's house. All right, motion to adjourn. Motion okay. to adjourn. Oh. Second. Hey, Larry. Yes. Jim. Yes. Rita. Yes. Tony. Yes. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you all. Good night, everyone. Folks. Good night. Have a good evening.